everyone, it's Daniel from Oracleize, and in today's tutorial, we will cover some of the best practices. Now we're going to start with the query ID mapping. And this is a quite good way to actually manage your query IDs and their states. So because technically it's possible for Oracleize to send out the same results multiple times uh, with a valid proof and it would be legit. So it's um, a good way to increase the safety of your smart contract to manage your query IDs and to decrease the needed trust in Oracleize. Then we will continue with the get price function, which is not mandatory, mandatory, but it's a convenient way to check if there is enough ether in your balance of the smart contract. So because we all know that the first query is for free for any further query you need to pay. So this is kind of a, a check function if there is enough ether in your account or in the balance and if not it gives you a little warning to um, put some ether in the account then we're going to implement the, a check the price function which is just a short function that's going to check how much the next query is going to cost you and then we're going to implement the authenticity proof now let's start with the query id mapping um let's start with contract example and we have to implement or include the oracleize api using oracleize future and in this case we will uh, use the oracleize future um, because this is kind of an experimental enhancement of the official api um, you can find it in the on the GitHub account of Oracleis, and there is a description in the documentation. So um, this is kind of experimental, but I have to implement it for this um, example. So let's start with our variable to in public Ethereum US dollar. So we will do an uh, URL request here, a URL query and we are going to ask for the Ethereum US dollar price. We are going to work with two events, log price updated and just a short information log oracleize, no, new oracleize query just a short description. Then we need our mapping. We will have um, bytes 32 and a Boolean variable here. And we're going to call it pending queries. So now our first function will be update function or update price. Public payable. And here we have got, first of all, we can use our log, new Oracleize query. And we can type in query was sent waiting for a response. As a quick note, and then we can actually create a new variable, bytes32. We can call it query ID, and here we are going to use the Oracleize query, and this will return the ID that gets saved in the bytes32 variable. So here we need our URL or the type URL and our actual path. I'm going to copy and paste this here. It's the JSON path to uh, um, a price, Ethereum US dollar price. And this will send out the query. And then we can use our mapping. Pending queries 
And here we can type in query ID or variable we just created and set it to true. Now we know that we are waiting for that particularly query ID to uh, get a result for. Now our second function is going to be the callback function. It gets called as soon as Oracle is ready or as soon as there is the result. So we have bytes32 again, the query ID, and our result. We're going to add the proof later, but for now that's um, enough. But first of all, we need to check if it's coming from the right address. And this should be Oracle's callback address. And if it's not coming from the right address, we need to do a revert. Now we can do a requirement. We can use our mapping pending queries. And we can use query ID, we just got the callback. And we can say we only continue if this is true. So for every process query ID, we are going to um, stop here. But let's say the query ID wasn't, isn't processed yet. So we are, we are going to continue. And we are going to delete this query ID from the pending queries. Query ID and this officially marks this query ID as processed. Now we can use our log. Um, price updated result and we can save it our variable. Need to do a parse integer result and that would be our mapping. Now let's continue with the get price function. We're going to go here into the update price and we will implement a simple if statement oracle's get price from the type URL. And if this is greater than this balance, look, we are going to use our log and say, give the user the hint query was not sent, please add some ether. If there is enough in the balance, we can continue just like that. And we can put it in here. Just like that. Now we are checking for um, if there is enough ether in the account on the balance and if the price is greater than the ether in the balance, then there is a warning and you need to cover some ether. Now we will implement the check price function. This is just a very short function. Function check price public. This is going to return integer value turn oracle's get price and here we can say again type url and we can actually set a gas limit of 50,000 which should be enough we can actually do the same here in our official query the same number 50,000 now we have our check price function now the last point 
is the authenticity proof. And we can put this into, first of all, our constructor, new example. And we can say oracleize set proof, proof type Android. And we can use the proof shield ledger. And now what we need to do is we have to go to our callback. We can let this um, uh, send a check here. And we can put a second if statement. We can say oracleize proof shield proof verify return code. And now we can say query ID result and proof, which we need to add here as a, as a third parameter, writes proof. If this is unequal zero, we have a problem because then the proof verification failed. Otherwise, it succeeded. And we can continue just like this. That's it for the smart contract. Now let's test if this is working. Start to compile, okay. Then we need to click on deploy. We can go here. First of all, we can click on check price. And as we see, the first result is zero. So the first query is for free. Now let's do update price. We can check here. Query was sent, waiting for a response. We can click here up here on Oracleize. No result yet, should come in any second. Maybe a little bit longer. Sometimes it takes a little while. Okay, the official result is 233. Now we can go back to run, check price. And now we have a slightly bigger return value. Now this is the weight price. If you convert it, it's I think 0 0.001 ether. So that's the current price. Now if you click on update price without putting any test ether into the balance, it should fail. Now if we click here, query was not sent, please add some ether. So it failed, we need to put in, let's say one ether just as a test. And now we can click on update price again. And query was sent, waiting for a response. Now you can back, go back to Oracleize and wait for the second result. It's probably going to be the same as the last one, 233. And that was it. Now we covered query ID mapping, how to get the price for the next query, and if there is enough ether in the balance, and the authenticity proof. Now, as always, you can go to our documentation, docs.oracleize.it, and use the Remix browser ID, IDE to test your smart contract um, with the Oracleize service.